Hey everybody, this is Brian and welcome to the eighth tutorial on Flutter and Dart. We're going to go ahead and continue our conversation on classes. And let's actually call this class two. Well, let's call it classes two. There we go. And while that's churning away, we're going to look at what we're going to cover today is called constructors. What are constructors? Well, whenever you have a class and you create a new instance of it something has to happen in the background and that's what we're going to cover today that background is called a constructor it's when the object is actually constructed in memory and to kind of solidify that main point here what we're going to do is we're going to go out here and we're going to say new house dot dart and i'm kind of doing this unscripted meaning i do not have my notes i'm just kind of typing so there probably be some errors and maybe some goof ups um, and we're going to keep this class very simple um, because we're not focused on the class itself but rather the constructor so width equals zero and length yeah all right so we've got that and we need to import house.dart and we're going to say house house1 equal new house so we've done this before we know what this is it's just going to make a new house what's going on under the hood here is it's looking at your blueprint and saying what do I need to do and then it's going out and making a new instance of this and hold on let me turn my music down I can't even hear myself think here I have to keep music on the background or my headset shuts off. It's kind of like an annoying feature. But uh, anyways, uh, so it's saying, what do I need to do here? Now, it knows what it needs to do by way of what's called a constructor. And every class has what's called a default constructor, meaning it just magically exists. And if you're wondering where it is, it's right here. Boom. So somewhere in there, under the hood, unknown to you, is a function that looks like this. And it probably just says return, would be my guess. Um, now, all that is, it's called the default constructor, but it doesn't exist in a manner that you can see it. It's under the hood, and you'll never access it. It exists solely for the compiler. Now, if you want to actually play around with it, you can add it in. constructed so what happens now is when we run this you'll see it suddenly says boom constructed where's that getting called we haven't changed anything in our main so it's saying all right here's the blueprint we want to use here's the name of the variable we want to use make a new instance of that and use this constructor in this case, it's saying use the default constructor. You can tell it's a default because there is a, you know, parentheses with nothing in it. That's called the default constructor. To solidify that, we're going to make a yet another one. And it's going to say default constructor already defined, meaning it knows that's the default because it's just an empty set of parentheses. Okay, that's great. What do you need a constructor for? What's the whole purpose of this thing? Constructor says, hey, what if you want to initialize a set of variables before you actually use them? Uh, in this case, let's say we want to use the width and the length. We don't want those to be zero. So whenever a new house is created, we want to automatically set those variables. And we want to force whoever is using this class to set those variables. So we're going to say int w, int l. And we are going to say width equal W, length equal L. And we're going to print these out. Yeah, fat fingered that one. All right, so when we go to run this now, 
you guessed it, it's going to crash. Bang. Why? No constructor house with matching arguments declared in class home. Whenever you see that, the, your first thing should be look for the new keyword, and then you'll see the error right next to it. It says two required arguments, but zero found. Well, how do we know what those arguments are? By looking at the constructor. We have two integers we have to do, deal with here. So let's say we want it to be five by nine. Bang. So now suddenly we have a width of five and a length of nine. We can actually take that a step further and make this, you guessed it, optional. And let's say this is five. Let's say this is nine. Well, let's go back to our program here. And notice how we've got to actually name them out now. I'm doing this for illustrative purposes. And we want to say, we want the width to actually be six instead of five. And it should be six by nine. There we go. So that, in a nutshell, is how to deal with a constructor and why you need one. Now, special note, um, Dart does not have, at least I haven't found, the concept of a deconstructor. And what a deconstructor is is when the class is actually being destroyed. Under the hood, there's this thing called garbage collection. And garbage collection is a very complex topic, but it's very easy to understand. When you are creating variables, right here, the use of the new keyword, you are putting that out on memory, and you're putting it on something called the heap. Um, under the hood, it may actually be somewhere else, but the heap is just a giant free store memory. Think of it like a giant warehouse. You're basically opening the door of the warehouse and throwing a house in it and saying, here, store this somewhere, I don't care where. Um, the problem is, when your program dies or gets shut off or the user closes it or whatever, that house still sits out in memory. So you need to actually delete that. Garbage collection takes care of all that mess for you. All you have to do is say, I want a new house and I want you to put it somewhere, I don't care where, and let me access it when I need it. And then when your program is closed, or if that variable goes out of scope, let's say we have a function up here, Let's move this up here. Whoops. Yeah. And let's call a test. Does the same thing. However, something drastically different is happening in the background here. What we're going to say, and I'm just going to put it in comments here. And then. flagged for garbage collection. That's what's really going on in the background here. So when this test function is called, it's going to go up and it's going to say, create a new house, bang. Then it's going to call our constructor, whatever the constructor may be. Then in the background, it goes out of scope. What happens is everything that was created in the scope is now flagged for garbage collection. What that means is it is no longer being used by the program and the program thinks it's safe to delete it out of memory. Now, if you've ever worked with older languages like C and C++, if you try to access something that doesn't actually exist in memory, your whole program just goes kaboom and crashes. Garbage collection takes all that headache away, meaning you don't have to worry about it. You just have to create it. It'll take care of it. And then when you're no longer using it anymore, it'll get rid of it for you. If your program crashes and dies an ugly death, it'll delete all that memory for you and you don't have to worry about it. Whew. So why does all this matter to you? because all of this is being done under the hood. Now, there's a special case. What if, and just follow me here, you want to actually do something with this and then close it out. You really should, and there's probably a million other ways to do this, dispose your class, meaning, and this is um, very similar, it's actually built in, I think, in some other languages. Kill me now. You would call that before the end here. So you would say, you may be tempted to do something like that. Now, why would you do this? Let's say you opened a file or a database or a network connection. You would want to actually close it here. So you would say, close all open connections or close all the things. That would be a good way to do it. But remember, under the hood, 
garbage collections being called. So if you forget to do any of this, it's going to happen automatically and you don't have to worry about it. Um, that's a very nice concept. Um, there are more advanced topics to it, but that in a nutshell is constructors and deconstructors. Uh, I hope you found this educational and entertaining and thank you for watching. Um, if you're so inclined, you can get the source code for this and other tutorials out on my website. Just go out to tutorials, tutorials, click on the tutorials link and go out to GitHub and I will have all the code out there. Thank you.